Hello, in this short video I would like to try to briefly explain what happens inside this Fourier function here. I will open it up then that I've used in a couple of other videos. It was originally developed by my former colleague Dr. Kochitov, credits to him. And what this function does is it converts a time domain signal including the corresponding time steps into a frequency domain signal or into the spectrum of this signal including the corresponding frequencies and i've got a couple of questions related to this video for example why do we have this scaling here with the 2 divided by n which is the number of time steps or why do we somehow cut the spectrum here and just use a certain part of it and how do we um, finally end up with these values of the frequency here and these questions i would like to answer and solve in this video and for this I will use an example and for the example at first I need to have a time step um, array and the number of time steps I will call n and I will set this to 50 and then I can set up my linearly spaced time steps starting with zero the, the uh, maximum time that I would like to use in my example here is 5 uh, some more or less arbitrary choice and then I will take n plus 1 um, steps at first because using this I get nice and um, evenly I mean there are of course linear distribution but I get nice values for all these time steps so my time step will be 0 0.1 second and then what I will do is I will delete the last time step I will delete the, the, the last value here the 5 seconds so then I get exactly 50 values and the last one will be nine, uh, 4.9 seconds and the next one then would be 5 corresponding to the 0 here. Why I do this uh, we will see in a second in a moment. So then I need to have um, a, um, a signal um, and I would like to use some harmonic oscillation and the harmonic oscillation needs to have some amplitude and I will use a sum of three of these functions. So the amplitude of the first function I will call a1 and I will set it to some rather large value, for example, 20. Um, and the unit of this could be volt, could be ampere, um, could be some velocity, um, some, some unit of some function that you would like to look at. And then for the, this harmonic oscillation, we also need to have a frequency. And if the, the total time range here is 5 seconds, the corresponding minimum frequency um, that we could fit into this time range would be 0 0.2 hertz, 1 over 5. And I would like to have twice of this, so 0 0.4 hertz. So then in the time range, I should see two total oscillations. And for the signal, I would also like to have a phase shift and just random and arbitrary, I select 45 degree. Okay, and so then I can calculate all the time values, the time function of the harmonic oscillation. And this is the amplitude multiplied with a cosine function. Mm, cosine, why, why cosine and not sine? Yeah, the, the Fourier transform is related to a cosine function. So we should start with the cosine function. Uh, then we need to have the angular frequency, which is 2 times p times the regular frequency. So this is the angular frequency. This needs to be multiplied with the time. And then we need to add our phase shift. And uh, the argument of this cosine function is meant to be in radians. So we need to divide by 180 and multiply with p. And then we get 50 values for our first time function um, for this harmonic oscillation here. And I can plot this just to have a look at it. And the plot appears on uh, oops, the plot appears on my second screen here. And so then we see two full cycles of this oscillation and amplitude of 20. Uh, volts, ampere, whatnot, and some phase shift of 45 degree with respect to this um, cosine function, which would have the, the maximum here at 
minus 45 degree then. Um, because with a plus we shift it to the left. Okay, so that should be the first function. Then I will do this a second time. So for the amplitude of the second harmonic oscillation, I will use um, a smaller value, for example, three. Then here I will use a frequency um, of one hertz, for example, that I should get five oscillations inside this full range. And I will use a phase angle of 120 degree, for example. And then I can copy this here, just change the one into a two and execute it. And then also plot this and plot window once again appears on my second screen. And then, okay, we see five full oscillations and there's also some kind of phase shift with this 120 degree and the amplitude is and not exactly three because we, we somehow a little under sample um, the signal. We don't reach the full amplitude here in this example. Okay. So then my third and last harmonic time function, I will use another amplitude, for example, 0 0.5. Um, for the frequency then, um, I would Let's, let's have another short look onto the time, uh, time steps. So for the frequency now, I would like to use the maximum frequency that would fit inside there. And so um, for this harmonic uh, uh, oscillation, I would, have, I would like to have the maximum value here, minimum value here, maximum value here. So two, the, the, the time range between two time steps, this should be the periodic time. So the frequency of the third signal should be one over 0 0.2, the 0 0.2 here, my um, second or yeah, zeros or fourth, second, third time, time step, however um, you number them. And this is five hertz. Okay, and for this, I will use a phase shift of zero so that the cosine function is really maximum here and minimum here and maximum there and so on. So then we can, by once again, changing all the twos into a three. I forgot about this one here. And this two into a three, we calculate the last harmonic oscillation and we see, okay, it's really maximum, minimum, maximum, minimum with 0.5 volt ampere whatever amplitude and i can once again plot this and the result looks like this very rapid quick oscillation but with a quite small amplitude okay so now what i will do is i will calculate the sum of all these signals so xt1 plus xt2 plus xt3 and i will also add some constant part um, for example two and so then i get once again 50 values and now if i plot this the result looks like this here and now you can see it's quite difficult um, to, to find out what, what harmonic oscillations do we have in there. I mean, we have this rather small one, but this is not very clear. I mean, still we would, end, if we would continue here, the, the next value that we would get would be exactly the same value here. And then we have this kind of rapid noise on it. And it's also not really around zero, but maybe shifted a little bit upwards. Um, because we only go down to minus 20, but we go up to 25. And this is exactly what the um, Fourier transform or fast Fourier transform um, would like to tell us what, what frequencies do we have in there. So it's quite simple to create harmonic oscillations and to add them up, but it's much more difficult to do the conversion back to check, okay, we have the final sum, what frequency components are in there. This is exactly what the Fourier transform does. It's a little bit like you have lots of ingredients and you process them and um, you get a chicken McNugget. 
this is might, might be easy. It's it's much more difficult to do the conversion back to process the finished chicken McNugget back into its ingredients, uh, back to a chicken and flour and and egg and what what might be all in there. Okay, so now we take this and we feed it into the FFT. So we say, okay, um, FFT of X of T or X from T, and I will save this result into some variable that I call capital X because it's the spectrum which depends on the frequency. Okay, let's do this. And what do we get? Okay, we get, we, we put 50 values in there and we get back 50 values. And we see, okay, most of them are somehow zero. Some of, some, some of them have some value um, and they are all complex because they have a real part and an imaginary part or they have magnitude and phase. So at first it might be interesting to just look at the magnitude of them and then we see, okay, we have something here, this yeah, is something, 100, then we have 500, then we have 75. We have 25, we have once again 75, and once again 500. Um, I can also plot this and take a look at the result. Um, and then we see, okay, this does not look too meaningful because it's plotting real part versus imaginary part. What, what we want to have is we want to um, look at the magnitude of this plot and then magnitude looks like this. So we have some value here, zero, some value here, zero, zero, some value here, and so on. Uh, we have something here, and then it looks a little bit like it's the, the mirror of this here, and, and it is the mirror. So the good thing now is that we know what we put in there, because we should see some oscillation with um, 20 of amplitude, 3 and 0 0.5, at this corresponding frequencies with this corresponding phase shifts. And we see, okay, we put something like 20 in there and we get back 500. So the result here is um, 25 times as large as it should be. And 25 is, is N, our number of time steps divided by two. So if we say, okay, um, our XF here, if we take the FFT and now divide by N, which is 50, and multiply by 2, and do this once again, and once again plot the magnitude here, okay, then this makes more sense because here we get 3, um, no, at, at, we, we get 20, at, at the position 3, we get 20, which is this amplitude here. At this position, we get 3. And at this position here, we get 1. Um, why 1? Uh, interesting, because it's it's the maximum frequency. There. This here somehow doubles then. And for the first uh, frequency, for the constant part, we have used 2. If you remember this formula here, the, the two that can be uh, it's, um, next to my head, and the two also doubles into a four. So this is doubled, this is doubled, this is exactly the value that we had. Okay. Um, so this now somehow fits. We, we get the right amplitude, more or less. Um, now we should think about um, the corresponding frequencies because here this should not be at 3, this should be at 0 0.4 and this should not be at 6, it should be at 1 and so on and so on. And why do we have this doubled? And so um, let, let's look at the magnitude once again now. So ABS, the absolute value of XF. Now we can see, okay, this is our constant part here, doubled. This is the first harmonic oscillation, second harmonic oscillation. This is the last, the third harmonic oscillation, but also doubled. And this is the, the mirror of this. So this is the same three here as here, and this is the same 20 as here. And if we look 
at the face of this, so at the angle. Uh, now we get back lots of values, but they are all in radians. So if we multiply them with 180 and divide by P, then we get back um, the phase angles that we put in there, the 45 degree, 120 degree. And then we see, okay, here the, this mirror has minus 120 degree and this here has minus 45 degree. Uh, our last um, harmonic oscillation that we put in there has zero and the constant part, of course, also has zero. So this me and, and all the other values, they are all random more or less, uh, but you can see that they also always mirror. So this is exactly the opposite value of this. This is the opposite value of this one. This is the opposite value or the inverse value of this one and so on and so on. So because we put some real valued time function in there, our time function was not complex, just had a real part, no imaginary part. Um, the spectrum that we get here so this is all the positive frequencies up to the highest frequency. And these are the negative frequencies in ascending order and opposite order. And they are just the complex conjugate of the positive frequencies. And this is because our time function is revalued and we can just omit them. There is no in for, for, um, for mathematicians, it's maybe interesting. Um, because they might have complex value time functions. In engineering sciences, you almost always have real value time functions, so you're not interested in this complex conjugates here. And that's why we would like to cut our signal here. So this is the column 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So we want to have our spectrum just from zero or from column one up to column 26. And 26 is N is our number of time steps divided by two plus one. So our XF, we would like to have only the values from the first column to N divided by two plus one. And so then we are just left with the positive frequencies. Um, if I plot this, Now we just have constant part, our first harmonic function, second harmonic function, third harmonic function. And now we would like to have them with the corresponding frequencies. So we need to somehow scale our frequency vector. And this is now also kind of simple because we know, okay, the last um, frequency that we have in there was five hertz this frequency f3 and this depended on if you remember one over 0 0.2 um, and we could also say this is the same as uh, let's look at the time vector again if we take at the time step double the time step and take one over double of the time step. So the maximum frequency that we have in our spectrum is always one over one over the time step. And the time step is the second value in our linearly spaced time vector. And this multiplied with two. This is the maximum frequency, which of course in this case uh, corresponds to, to the five hertz that we put in there. And then I can set up a frequency vector and this will be once again linearly spaced starting at zero going up to this maximum frequency and I need um, n divided by two plus one points um, 25 plus one is 26 so these will be the corresponding frequencies and now I could um, repeat this plotting and plot spectrum versus frequency and plot it. And here's the result. And now we can see, okay, um, at a frequency of 0 0.4 Hertz, we have an amplitude of 20. At a frequency of 0 0.4 Hertz, we have inserted a frequency of um, an amplitude of 20. 
at a frequency of 1 hertz, we had an amplitude of 3, and at this maximum frequency, we had um, maximum frequency of 5 hertz, we had an amplitude of 0 0.5, but here, because it's the last value, the first value and the last value, they are somehow doubled. And so also our constant part here, the 2, if you remember the 2 from the formula, this 2 here, um, this is also doubled in the display. Okay, and this is the reason why in this Fourier function, let me open it up again, um, why we have this scaling here, and why do we cut the signal like this, and why the um, frequency vector is created in this way. And, okay, there is, this is, to be honest, it's just part of the answer. You have to think about this problem once again. If the number of points that you put in there is not um, an even number, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an odd number, then it's, it's a little bit different, but the motivation and uh, the arguments are very similar. And then if you want, don't want to get um, a spectrum that has directly the same frequency as your input signal, but if you want to have a... Um, a density spectrum so if you want to get volts per hertz ampere per hertz because you don't have a continuous signal because you have a single pulse then also the scaling is a little bit different but uh, this is something that i will maybe explain in another video